Now it's time to turn our attention to your website. Your web design works hand in hand with your content to engage visitors, to move those visitors into the prospect phase and from prospect to customer. And the design is as important as the words on the page. Because first impressions matter. When people come to your website, if it's not visually appealing, they are unlikely to stay. And so the first question you have to ask yourself is, your website outdated? And here's the heartbreaker. In the world of the internet, two years is a lifetime. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to blow your website up every two years, but you should have a plan that allows you to work on different sections of your website and continually update it. So every few years, the entire site does turn over. And it's not just enough for your website to look good on your desktop. 56% of your traffic comes from mobile devices. We are living in a mobile world. The first question you have to ask yourself is, is your website truly mobile responsive? Good web design actually is mobile first, with so much of our interactions moving to tablets and mobile devices. It's great if your website looks good on your desktop, but it really needs to look good and work extremely well on mobile. And so a lot of designers are actually taking the approach of building the mobile site first and then adding features and expanding the page for desktop. One of the things that happens when you work like this is you begin to fine tune the design and recognize that there are elements like the little RP that work great on desktop, but are really kind of pointless on mobile. A lot of companies actually have really different versions of their website for desktop and mobile. For example, on desktop, this website works really well with a great big picture of the consultant Julie featured, but that would be ridiculous on mobile. And so for mobile, she opted to lose the picture completely and just get right to the meat, get right to the question and the information. As you're thinking about your website, it's not enough to think about just the mobile, the phone, and the desktop, because there are a lot of people that are working on devices that are somewhere in between. They are tablets. And so... I know this complicates things, but you almost have to have three versions of your website. The good news is a lot of the design software actually allows you to make just very simple changes in the code and allows you to create three different versions of your website that respond to the device that your customer is viewing the site on. And so as you're looking at your website, whip out a laptop pull out your phone, grab somebody's tablet, and make sure you look good everywhere. The other thing that you need to think about as you're thinking about your web design is what's called vertical hierarchy. What's on the top of the page? What is the experience like as you go from the top to the bottom? When you're working on a desktop, you can have side-by-side information. But when you go to mobile, what goes on top, what goes on bottom? While the picture is nice, the information is way more important. And so I think they made a good choice to put information up top, image, and then more information. Virtual hierarchy is actually a subset of the overall visual hierarchy strategy for your website. What is visual hierarchy? It's using different elements to visually drive people from one thing to the next to help them figure out what's the most important thing on the page. This is an example of really bad visual hierarchy. Why? Because you've got 
big competing images. You've got blocks of text. You have buttons. You have little buttons here. And really, your visitor doesn't know what to look at first. A much better approach is to streamline, to give them one picture and a little bit of text and then more underneath. There are actually six main principles of visual hierarchy. The first is size. While bigger may not be better, the human mind does process bigger elements as more important. We'll read the bigger text first. We'll look at the bigger images or illustrations. Everything in your design is competing with everything else for attention. So it's your job to guide the reader by making sure that the way the elements are sized and scaled relative to each other reflects their importance. The second tool is color. Bright colors tend to stand out, particularly if the colors around them are subdued. That means the eye is naturally going to be drawn to a color that looks different from the others, even if the difference isn't extreme. This is particularly helpful when you're putting buttons on a page. The next thing to remember is reading patterns. In the West, we read from top to bottom and from left to right. While there are examples of good visual hierarchy that don't keep this in mind, it's really human nature. People are going to look at the top left, go across, go down, and go over here. As you're putting information on the page, think about putting important information at the top and then down here as well, because people will naturally stop there before they leave. The next element is alignment. Items that are aligned either vertically or horizontally are going to be perceived as if they are related. So are elements that are placed in proximity to each other. So when you put two different images on a page, but you line them up neatly, either vertically or horizontally, visitors will automatically group those things together. Another tool in your hierarchy toolkit is spacing. When you add space around elements, that's referred to as negative or white space. That white space actually helps you emphasize the things that you've built that buffer around. And finally, patterns and shapes. Complex patterns will generally attract more attention than simple ones. And the same goes for shapes. A square, for example, is less likely to draw visual attention than a more free form shape or even a square with rounded corners. And so these elements all work together. One of the advantages of working with a professional designer is that they really understand how to use these pieces to maximize their effectiveness and drive people to the right part of your page. Movement. We've come a long way from great big flashy animation. Today's web movement is more subtle, but equally effective at pulling the eye and directing the visitor's attention. Some of the most common animation techniques are hover animation, micro animation, and parallax. The reason that these are very popular is they're small movements. They don't take a lot of computing power from your website. And so you can have the animation and not slow your website down because that's really important. What is hover animation? Well, this is an example that as you move your cursor over each element, it moves. What that does is it lets people know that they can take action by clicking that. Another example is here where you actually have these three elements and when you roll over one of them, it flips and actually gives you more information right there. 
Micro interactions are also very subtle. These may or may not actually take you anywhere, but visually having them on the page, again, makes the reader stop and look a little bit longer. Parallax is hard to demonstrate in a PowerPoint presentation, but essentially what you do is you hold constant part of the page. And so as the visitor scrolls down the page of this website, you'll notice that the image of Julie stays there. It seems fixed in place and only these middle sections will roll up and down. That subtle animation reminds people that there's other information on the page and it also holds constant the things that are most important. As you're experimenting with animation and images, remember that it is absolutely critical that you do not damage the speed of your website. 57% of consumers will leave if a site takes more than three seconds to load. Some simple things you can do to improve your speed. The first and the biggest is high quality hosting. Good hosting packages are available at $15 and $20 a month. <clears throat> This is not something that you want to chintz out on and go, well, I can get hosting for $5.99 a month. You can, but if the, the less expensive hosting delivers a slow experience, you're turning customers off. It's not worth it. The next thing you want to do is optimize your images. Yes, you have a fabulous four megapixel image that looks great in print. You do not need the image to be that big for your website. So before you load images to your website, reduce them to 72 dots per inch, make them smaller. They will still look good on the site and they won't slow you down. Clean up your media library in your database. Over time, you may end up with three or four different versions of the same picture. Get rid of the older versions. Take things out of the media library. Have your designer go through your code and get rid of unnecessary code. One of the things that happens over time is one person works on the website, then someone else, then someone else. And each designer has their own style, their own favorite plugins, their own favorite way of doing things. And most of the time, the designers add new code on top of the old stuff, but never bother deleting the old stuff. And sometimes those competing codes can slow you down. And finally, if you have a really long page with a lot of information, think about what's called a smart content load. You can design the site so only a little bit of the page appears when it first loads, and then the rest appears as you scroll down the page. What that does is it improves the user experience, and it also improves your overall speed, so Google is not disappointed.